Hey, what's up everybody? In this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create the base for our miniature golf course project. Uh, so this is a new project. So what I'd ask you to do is go ahead and take a look at the Google Classroom. And once we get into Google Classroom, go into Classwork, scroll all the way down, and you're going to find your miniature golf course project outline. When we take a look at the outline, okay, you're gonna see all sorts of stuff, but what we need to really kind of focus in here are going to be the constraints. So what you have to understand is that your hole needs to be 25 foot by 20 foot by one foot. We're all going to use the same exact base for everything that we do. Whether you're creating an individual hole or you're creating a clubhouse, it does not matter. We're gonna use that same base. So 25 foot by 20 foot by one foot is what you need to know for the first part of this. Okay, so jumping into Fusion, the first thing we need to really worry about is we need to create a new folder uh, within our 21-22 LTHS IED folder. And with your new folder, I would go ahead and just tell you to uh, put in your first and your last initial, and then go ahead and just type in Miniature Golf Course Project. Okay, so once you have created that folder, go ahead and double click it. You have a new design that's in here and go ahead and do a save. Verify that is being saved to that new folder that you've just created. And let's go ahead and just give it the name Miniature Golf Course. Okay, so that is done. We are ready to begin. Okay, so once you've created that <clears throat> and you have saved that, now we can go ahead and get started. So I can go ahead and close out on the data panel. All right, so first what we're gonna do is create a sketch and you need to be making sure to focus in on the bottom work plane here. So pick on the bottom work plane and now we can go ahead and do a pan and now we can create a rectangle. So starting from the origin, I'm now going to create this golf course. All right, so what a lot of students do is they make the mistake of <clears throat> typing in 25, hitting tab, hitting 20, hitting tab, all right? The issue is, is that this is not 25 foot, this is actually 25 inches by 20 inches. So the quick fix on this, there's a couple ways. We could type in 25, okay? And then just add the apostrophe for 25 foot, okay? Or with 20, we can type in 20, type in feet, okay? That would work as well, okay? But what we're really having to do here is just take a look to make sure that this actually has dimensions that are 300 by 240. The other thing we could have done with the dimension was we could have typed in 25 multiplied by 12. The multiplication key is the star key on the number pad if you're using a laptop. Okay, same thing with this one. We could have just typed in 20 multiplied by 12. We got 240. So double, triple, and quadruple check to make sure that your dimensions at this point are 300 by 240. If they are, go ahead and finish the sketch. Look at this in the home view. Okay, and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to extrude this up. So looking at original dimensions, we knew that was going to be a one foot base. So let's go with extrude. Let's pull up on the arrow and let's just type in 12 for 12 inches and hit enter. So the way to look at this is think about this as a concrete pad that we have just poured for our mini golf course uh, hole. Now, if you take a look back at our notes, when we were talking about this as a class, there's going to be a border wall that goes all the way around it just to keep this ball in play. So that border wall we decided was going to be four inches thick and it was going to be eight inches tall. In order to do this, we're going to create a sketch on top of that face. And now we're going to be using offset and we can come here to the outside line and pick it. And now we have this scroll bar. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this towards the inside. We can see that that has a negative impact on that dimension. So we have to remember that when we're plugging the next part in. So I'm gonna say that this is negative four for my thickness and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Okay, when I'm cruising in here, I can now see that that inside wall has now been established as a sketch. I'm now going to finish the sketch and look at this in a home view. Okay, that's when I can now come out and use extrude. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the inside of the profile here. I'm going to use my arrow and pull up. All right, and now I'm going to give that a distance of eight inches. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. So now that wall has been established that's going to be keeping that ball in play for our individual hole. Okay, so the next thing we have to be thinking about is, is the entrance and the exit points for our individual hole, okay? And in the actual assignment, we can see, okay, that it was 36 inches uh, is what we must have for a pathway in between the holes, okay? 
So jumping back in Fusion, now you have to start looking at your individual sketches, you have to look at your master group sketch, and you have to determine where your entrance and your exit points are, okay? Uh, it just seems like naturally a lot of people put these entrance and their exit points over towards the corners. It's gonna make the next part really easy, okay? If you don't have an entrance and exit point towards the corner and it's towards the center, don't worry, we will cover that. So now I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna say that my entrance point is over here towards the back side of this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the top face of this wall. Okay, now I can use rectangle. I can start it from this corner and I'm just going to take this rectangle and put it along this top edge. I can now dimension what that width needs to be, which is 36 inches. I can finish the sketch and now I can use extrude to grab the profile and cut this down, okay, a distance of negative eight. Okay, so now my entrance point is done. Okay, I could repeat the process if it was in this corner. But in my case, I'm going to say that my exit point is over on this wall and it's right down the middle. Okay, so what that means is we have to understand what this distance is. If you've forgotten what the distance is, don't forget you always have the ability to use inspect. We can pick an edge and it will tell us what that distance is. So in our case, it's 300. Okay, so with that being said, now what we have to do is a little bit of math. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up the calculator. I'm gonna say, I wanna take 300 inches and I want to subtract 36 inches, which is the width of our exit point. That's a leftover distance of 264 inches. But the thing is, since I want it split down to center, I'm gonna go ahead and divide that by two, which is now telling us that we need to have 132 inches on both sides if our pathway is actually 36 inches. So we have to remember the 132. Now I can create a sketch here on the top of the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and once again, create a rectangle. I'm gonna start from this edge and take it to this edge. And now I can specify what this dimension is, which is 36. Okay, now I need to dimension this edge here over to this point here. And that needs to be 132, which is what we came up with the calculation. Finish the sketch, look at this in the home view. Now we can go into extrude and grab the profile. We can cut this down, okay, a distance of eight inches as a cut. <clears throat> so that would be my exit point. So at this point, I would go ahead and do a quick save. Okay, and now we're ready to start manipulating the color of things. Okay, so in our case for mini golf, we are not going to be applying materials. Instead, we are going to be uh, applying appearances. So if we come up here into mini golf at the top of our browser, right click, we can see we have physical material as an option and we have appearance. Okay, we are not going to be using physical material. Instead, we are going to be using the appearance. Okay, so just remember that for the entire project, we're going to be playing with appearance. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to go ahead and go into appearance. Okay, since we're talking about uh, the grass at this point, the fairway, okay, we have to be thinking, you know, what that would look like in real life. It's obviously not going to be shiny. It's going to be made of turf. So I would recommend probably coming down and finding uh, something that's going to be rough in nature. If we go into paint, we can see we have all sorts of different types, but we also have this one here called powder coat rough. So what I'm going to do is before I pick on it, I'm going to switch this to faces. Actually, I'm going to go with bodies. So I'm going to keep it at bodies for this first one. And I'm going to go ahead and apply my powder coat rough green, okay, to that entire object. Okay, I'm not really liking the color of it. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to right click on this first and say edit. Now, what I would recommend is that every time you use an appearance is go ahead and give it a name. So I will call this fairway. Okay, and now I can adjust, okay, the color, okay, for my fairway. I'm going to keep this a darker green. I'm going to say done. And now I can go ahead and close. All right, so looking at my course, I'm gonna say that um, my green for my course is gonna be over here, you know, towards the uh, bottom left-hand corner. All right, so what I'm gonna do in order to create this, all right, if you've ever been golfing, you're going to notice that fairway color of green is going to be a darker green than the green that's used uh, on an actual putting green, all right? Just the difference in the grass and the height of it. So we want this to appear to be a lighter color. All right, so in order to do that, we have to actually give this a face that's going to rise up a little bit so we can apply that lighter color of green. So in order to create the putting green, I'm going to create a sketch. Okay, I'm gonna use spline because spline is going to give us more of a natural look, okay, to our putting green. 
Okay, and I can go ahead and close that up. Just don't forget once you're done, okay, you can come out here and you can adjust your size and your shape for your putting green. All right, so once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with the sketch and look at this in the home view. I'm going to use extrude. I'm gonna pick on this profile and I'm gonna pull this up. This is going to be a very, very small rise um, you know, with the extrusion. I'm talking like a half inch in mine. I'm gonna go ahead and say done. Since I don't want there to be a sharp edge coming from the fairway to the green, I'm now going to add a fillet. I'm gonna grab the top edge and I'm going to match that fillet up with what my extrusion was, which was half of an inch. So it's going to be able to go up, okay, onto the green. All right, the issue is, is that my green is a different color. So I'm going to right click on top of the face and come down into appearance. Okay, I have my fairway green that's already here. All right, it's going to be a rough, uh, you know, pink coat. All right, so it's not going to be shiny. So what I can do is I can right click and I can duplicate this. My new duplicate is over here. I'm going to right click and do an edit. And now I'm going to be calling this putting green. All right, and then from putting green, I can now change my color up to a lighter color green and say done. Okay, switch this to faces, and now I can apply that to the face. Don't forget the fringe that's also on the outside. Okay, so now I can go ahead and close out. All right, so now we're going to get that appearance of that raised sort of putting green, but it's also a different color when compared to the rest of the fairway. All right, so now let's start talking about major features. Okay, a lot of people, when they're thinking of mini golf, they're thinking about um, you know, water hazards, all right? And as a class, we came up with what the depth was. We're also thinking sand bunkers. We came up with the depth for, uh, for that. So let's just show you how to quickly put in a water hazard. These can be small ponds, lakes. It could be even like a river, all right? That's totally up to you with your design. So I'm gonna make mine like an elongated uh, lake that's going to be diagonal. It's gonna stretch all the way across the hole. So it's gonna be like a major water barrier or hazard. So once again, using spline, I can come out here and I can begin sketching my profile, okay, for my water hazard. I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, making this, but I also don't want this to be like a whole lot of real estate. So just know we can go ahead and we can skinny this up, okay, we can use our grips, okay, we can go ahead and make it like so. So we're going to say that this is our um, water hazard. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the sketch on that, look at this in the home view. Okay, now I'm going to come down and go into extrude, and I'm going to cut this down this time. And we said in our class notes that we thought that a good depth for a water hazard would be six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut that in negative six. When we're taking a look at this, we can now see, okay, that our water hazard has sharp corners on it. All right, in real life, it's probably going to be, you know, smoothed over on both the bottom and the top. So we can come up and we can use fillet. So I'm going to grab the top edge and the bottom edge. Okay, if I tried using three to split the difference, it's probably gonna come back in error. So I'm gonna go a little bit less than half, which would be two and a half. We can see how it rounds it over just perfectly. Okay, so there's our water hazard. Now the issue is, is that this does not look like water. This is looking like fairway still. So we're going to come in here, right click on top of this and go into appearance. Okay, once I go into appearance, I'm now gonna want like a slicker and shinier material that's going to sort of represent water a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this over to faces. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna get out of my paint, go into my plastic. I'm gonna find like ABS, that'll work great. I can now slap that onto the surface. The issue is, is that right now the ABS is white. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do an edit on this. I'm going to change the name of this to water. Okay, and now I can use my scroll and get over into my blues pick a nice shade of blue and go ahead and say done. Okay, so now I can come in and start applying this to the faces that are going to be my water hazard. So I'm gonna take this up to this rim. I'm going to leave this alone. This is part of the fairway. Okay, so it's going to go and just roll right in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close out. So that's what a water hazard could possibly look like, you know, for your miniature golf course. The other thing that we're gonna be talking about <clears throat> and some of you are gonna be using is going to be a sand bunker. All right, it's going to be the same exact process. We're just going to change the color of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch here right on the face. And I'm going to say that I want to make this tricky for our patrons. I'm going to be creating a bunker that's going to be wrapping on this side of the green. Okay, like so. And this is what it would be like in real life as well. Okay, I can now adjust this if I need to using those grips. Okay, and now I can go ahead and finish up with the sketch. 
Okay, so now we can use extrude, go to our profile. We're going to cut this down. According to our class notes, we said that a sand bunker, a, a fair sand bunker would be like a two inch depth. So it can roll in, but it's not too hard to you know tap out. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. So on a sand bunker, same as the water feature, all right, it's not going to have squared off corners. So we can use fillet. We can grab the top edge and the bottom edge. Okay, that's a two inch depth. We can't use one. So I'm going to drop that down to like 0.8. Let's see if we can get that to work. All right, and it does. All right, so now I want to obviously change this to the color of sand. So I can right click on the top of the face. I can come into appearance. All right, I am going to use that, you know, that powder coat rough again. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. I'm going to right click on this new one and I'm going to say edit and I'm going to say sand bunker. Okay, I can now use my slider. I can pull this over into the shades of, you know, brown or tan color I want to use for sand. I can pick it and say done. Switch this over to faces, and now I can apply that to the face that I want. Okay, so I can go ahead and apply this, and then once again, go ahead and apply this. Leaving the fairway alone where it rolls in. I can go ahead and close. All right, so there you go. <clears throat> All right, that's a water hazard, that's a sand bunker, and we have our putting green. All right, there will be more videos I'm going to be creating for other sort of features like uh, mountains, if you would like to create a mountain or a big rock or boulder, how to create those uh, walls and so on. All right, so just stay tuned. But this is really like the main features and how to get, um, you know, your overall base started, okay, for our miniature golf course project.